Hello there, my name is Anthony Barocas with IUB Communications, and today we're going to look at what is, I feel, the next generation of video production, which is networked video. We're setting up a three camera shoot here, and we're going to be using three networked enabled cameras and NDI to do this entire production. I have here just a small sampling of the hardware that is designed to use NDI. Now NDI enables video and audio to go over a network, like this ethernet cable right here. There's no video cables, but I'm able to see this camera on this TriCaster and this vMix setup at the same time because it's shared across the network. It's available to two completely different systems. That's really hard to do with SDI or HDMI without adding splitters and distribution amplifiers. NDI eliminates all of that. Moreover, this camera has one cable to it. It's powered over NDI. So it's power, audio, ethernet, and with BirdDog, it's even comms. So you can communicate with an operator on a camera if you're using the BirdDog system. So what we're doing here today is we're going to be using the new TriCaster 4K which has four NDI outputs on the TriCaster itself and then we're going to be using three Panasonic cameras and a new tech spark to grab the slides. Basically no video cables on this entire shoot. They're all designed for an active internet connection which is not always available. Our situation is that this is a corporate environment and in a corporate environment things are locked down, meaning that there's no devices on the network that the IT department hasn't already gone through and approved, meaning you can't plug the camcorder into the network, have it get an IP address and be able to see the NDI on the network. It just doesn't work out of the box. So to enable this we are using a standalone Wi-Fi enabled router that provides the DHCP, the IP numbers for all the devices on the network and offers a gigabit network so that the data can pass between the devices and also incorporate any wireless devices into the same network. Now the CX350 being a network device and being able to deliver video over IP it is not just an NDI device. So you need to go through the menu settings on the CX350 to first set it up to be seen on the network. As you can see from this Panasonic slide, you need to go to the menu, go to network, and set it up so that it can be used on a LAN. Wi-Fi is not compatible with NDI. It has to be a wired local area network. Next, you need to go to the network function and specifically select NDI as the protocol that it's going to be using, not some generic streaming directly to a destination. Lastly, you need to go to the LAN properties, go to the IPv4 settings, and make sure that it's set to DHCP, which means it will accept an IP address from your network and that it is set to be a client as opposed to a server. This way, when you go back to your IPv4 settings, you should see numbers provided from your router for the camera to appear on your local area network. Once you do all this, now you go to a laptop on the local area network, use the NDI Tools Studio Monitor, and then open up the CX350 selected as a source in the NDI Studio Monitor. Let's look at that. I am selecting the CX350 right here, which is right over here. And we're gonna say channel one. And it says, I need to register it. So there's a register button down in the bottom right. Click on that. Visit the store to purchase the NDI license for the camcorder. So I click on the store. Do, do, do. Here we are. Panasonic 
HX upgrade for Panasonic cameras. And there's a lot of them here. Click on the 350 or the CX-10 or whichever camera you have. We want one, add to the cart. There we go. Total is $299. All right, when you've done all that, you proceed to checkout. You need to have a new tech account that these licenses will be applied to. So if you don't already have an account, you need to create one. All right, there it is, installation guide. You have to read through the terms of service, agree, place the order. Now, you can print a copy of your registration or if you just want to copy and paste the data, you go into your account. Here's your orders. You can view the order and the order will contain your registration code. So we can copy that and then switch back over to here, paste that in, enable, your camera is now licensed for use with NDI-HX. Click OK. And if I open up the shutter, there it is. And that is how simple it is to activate the Panasonic camera. Here we are in the TriCaster. And you can see that I am talking to this bird dog camera right here. Talking to this camera right here. It's, re it's receiving. And again, it is literally one Ethernet cable providing power, control, and everything. So I've got my presets down here for my pan tilt zoom camera. And now I want to add the Panasonic camera, which is not in there. So NDI is as simple as click the gear. It'll see all the NDI, and you can see CX350 channel 1. We'll click on that. It'll take a moment to load up. Let me close this. And there you go. I can put that into preview as two. I can take that live, enter. Back to preview. So that is the CX350. And like I said, it is literally one ethernet cable and I'm plugged in because I'm going to be here a while, or you could be on a battery, and that's it. There is USB in this camera. However, Panasonic says that USB or wireless USB or Wi-Fi cannot be used for NDI-HX. However, there is wireless NDI-HX. NewTek makes the Connect Spark. This little device has Ethernet, which is not power over Ethernet, unfortunately. It takes 12 volt in, has HDMI in, HDMI out, there's also an SDI model, and audio in, audio out, and Wi-Fi. So if you wanted to, you could take your HDMI out of here, since this is HD only, the Spark Connect is HD only, that you can, by that I mean not 4K, it's not a 4K, uh, NDI coming out of the, the Panasonic camera, and this is not a 4K device. So if you're dealing with just HD, then you could just as easily put that in a hot shoe mount, take your HDMI, run it into the Spark, and away you go. You'd be completely wireless, uh, need a battery, obviously 12 volt battery for the Spark, but there are camcorder batteries that are big enough and have 12 volt out in addition to the um, power for the camera. So you could power both devices from a big battery on the back here or use two batteries. And that way you'd be perfectly free to roam around, get footage at an event and wirelessly bring it back into the system. Back here, I have another camera set up this has the Bird Dog Studio, so it tells me this is camera one right on the camera. This can obviously face the talent, and then they know which camera to look at. Camera one, camera two, camera three, because to them it's just a bunch of cameras. Now, in addition to that, this has comms coming out of the headset. So I've got my headset here, and I can be in communication with the network 
because you, I'm running comms on software on a Windows machine and I have a headset plugged into the laptop and I'm able to right here call that up and I see all of the what the camera feeds are and I'm able to talk to them and listen to each camera or all the cameras. In addition to that when this camera is called up on my vMix let's call this up in preview it's going to tell me this camera is getting ready to be taken live and then when I do take it live you've got tally so that is all happening over NDI comms tally video feed this is both SDI and HDMI and both have a loop through and through the menu system you can actually configure what this studio does now do you want to use this for a camera to come into your mixer or do you want to send your program output somewhere else you can do that you can select this so that the HDMI output of this is actually coming from NDI and you can send the signal to this as a stage monitor as a overflow monitor and that is a lot of flexibility again putting all of the video on the network makes that possible and even the Panasonic, which we were looking at before, one of the nice things is you've got a little record indicator tally on here and on the front. Well, it just so happens that when you call that up on the computer, the tally light on the camera goes on. And if I take it off a of program, it goes off. If I put it on program, it goes back on. So both the operator and the talent know when this camera is live. That's, again, part of the NDI specification, even on the Panasonic. You don't even need a third-party piece of hardware to make that happen on the Panasonic. Lastly, you can control pan tilt zoom, zoom cameras with dedicated hardware. This is a bird dog controller. There are other controllers out there as well. But again, I want you to notice that this whole controller and all the cameras it can talk to, it's one cable. This is power over Ethernet powering the device and all of the communications back and forth. And of course, there's a headphone jack in here because being a bird dog piece of equipment, you can run comms out of this box too. So the director can sit operating on their computer, have comms right next to them. They can talk to cameras, they can talk to stage, they can talk to pan tilt zoom operators, they can talk to graphics, and that all happens over NDI. So this is just a, a quick look at a little bit of what NDI has to offer from communication to tally and of course video and audio across the network. There's also multicasting where you can send one camera to multiple sources. Now, right now, this is sending two streams to two different devices. But if you're going to send it to a lot of places, you can set up what they call multicasting on NDI. And that will send one stream and split it out onto all those devices. So you're not overloading the, the network with a bunch of different streams all going around. Another interesting feature is over here on my vMix system, I'm actually looking at the output of my TriCaster system so that that way you can have one person switching a feed and then take a pre-graphics feed, send it to another machine, and you can, mix, you can mix a completely different output with different graphics, say in two different languages. You've got somebody doing titles in English, somebody doing titles in Spanish. Perfect for international sports. So that flexibility it would be, you'd need a whole rack of hardware just to be able to move those video signals around and reroute them and patch them. And with NDI, that is all just on the network. This has been a little overview and an introduction to just some of the capabilities of NDI. From cameras, to control, to mixing, pan tilt zoom, wireless, sending one destination to multiple places, running audio, tally, it's, it's, it's really, we're just scratching the surface as to what this can do and how people are going to leverage it in the future. NDI is in version four. There are gonna be future versions that add more capability, more flexibility, and features we haven't even thought of. Till then, my name is Anthony Barocas from Aiba Communications. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.